it's actually the uh, the chemistry building Cogswell, um, and the uh, those are the vents for the uh, fume hoods. Uh, the building to the left there we'll see is actually the Johnson Rowland Science Center uh, with a uh, observatory on the roof and about one, uh, maybe about 50 to 70 meters on the other side of that will be the uh, CBIS, the Center for, Bio, for Biochemistry and Interdisciplinary Research. All right, now the interesting part about uh, our program, or an inter interesting part, is that we have three paths that lead to what we call an ACS approved uh, Bachelor of Science degree. The American Chemical Society puts down pretty strict standards on what they will approve as a, an acceptable bachelor's degree in chemistry. So we've got it now, we have three tracks. One is called our traditional track. Then for a few years now, we have had the chemical biology track. And then the third one was just added in this year is called the industrial chemistry track. And hopefully we were in the process of getting one ready, a fourth one called the chemical physics track. So hopefully that'll be in place by the end of next year. Uh, so you'll be able to take advantage of that one too. But what I'll do is go through, these are the three uh, basic tracks of curriculum uh, for each of those, uh, those uh, individual specialties. And we're gonna, <clears throat> and that's in, actually in that brochure that all of you, the, all the chemistry uh, accepted students were, were uh, sent um, if you, uh, you can actually go online and find them also, or if you want to want a uh, copy, you can email us and we'll get you a copy of that brochure once we can get back into our labs in our offices. Um, but this is the more traditional track. This is the one typically that was associated for a long time with the RPI degree. Um, and it's still the one that's probably uh, the most common one taken by our majors. Um, and it has, you can see, a very strong component of chemistry, physics, and math, as well as uh, an a broad, uh, some biology in it, and, and a lot of bit openings in there for, uh, for free electives. Okay, if you take a look here, you'll see that the spring, sem uh, the spring semester, you go into the summer after your sophomore year. This would have been the, the uh, the spring semester of your junior year. And this is what we call our ARCH program, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So here's the curriculum for the, uh, that's the traditional track. Here's the one for the chemical biology track. You can see we've replaced certain courses, the selected courses, with biochemistry or, or biological chem courses. Uh, one that would probably make you more prepared if you're heading towards medical school or uh, degrees, uh, future degrees in biochemistry or in medicinal chemistry or anything having to do with a more biological orientation. Um, the uh, third track is our industrial chemistry track. And this is just our new one. We're all very excited by it. Um, and again, we've replaced selected courses out of our, our uh, traditional track with engineering oriented courses. And some of them actually have been courses created specifically, at least one of them I know is course created specifically inside the chemistry department for to prepare you for an industrial track. The interesting part about this program is that you have the option with the co-terminal program potentially of going on and getting your bachelor of science in chemistry and then getting a master's of engineering in chemical engineering. So in five years, you could get a BS in chemistry and then a bachelor's and then a master's in engineering. Um, <clears throat> so we got to firm that one up a little bit more, but the, uh, but I know that was agreed to by the, uh, by the faculty uh, in chemical engineering. So um, the, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the co-terminal program down the road. But right now, what I'd like to do is uh, move over to the, our idea of the traditional RPI education is one in which we are very strongly grounded in experiment. And <clears throat> chemistry is an experimental science, and we've 
pride ourselves on producing our majors coming out, being able to walk into any major laboratory uh, around the country and being able to go right to work. And you'll see from the, uh, the nature of the laboratory education uh, that you get hands-on experience and become facile with the use of the, uh, the state-of-the-art equipment. All right, so our main program, which starts in our sophomore year, there are lab chemistry labs in the freshman year with Chem 1 and Chem 2, uh, which we call Chem 1100, Chem 1200. But sophomore year, we begin with our real intensive laboratory course, Experimental Chemistry 1, which consists of classical and modern analytical methods, and then an introduction into organic methods. That's you take it typically in the fall semester of your, your sophomore year. The spring semester of your sophomore year, while well, you've taken one semester of organic chemistry, Experimental Chemistry 2 focus, focuses in heavily on organic chemistry synthesis, how to analyze organic molecules, and how to determine organic uh, molecule, molecular structure. And that's a very intensive course in organic chemistry. Uh, a junior level course, and one you'll see the instruments for, is inorganic uh, focus on chemical uh, experimental, experiment, experimental chemistry three, focuses a lot in on inorganic synthesis, analytical methods, and physical chemistry methods. Uh, uh, chemical experimentation four, it focuses really heavily on analytical, instrumental, and physical chemistry methods. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll take you to our laboratory suite for the, the uh, chemical experimentation uh, for chem uh, experimental chemistry three and four. This is the suite of instruments in the laboratory for those courses. Um, I'll go through them a little bit in more detail. These are all instruments, state of the art instruments, research grade instruments that you're trained to use. Uh, your hands actually get on these instruments and you learn how to actually manipulate and deal with them on a daily basis. So uh, micro balance, uh, 10 to the minus six uh, grams measurement capability. Uh, we do a lot of vibrational spectroscopy. This is vibrational laser Raman spectroscopy over here. Thermal gravimetric analysis. Uh, how things, when things are heated up and they fall apart, how does the mass change? And we can use that to determine uh, what pieces of the molecule are coming off and what kind of structure there is as the molecule decomposes. Differential scanning calorimetry is, the, is a uh, technique of doing uh, calorimetry like you did probably with a styrofoam cup in your high school lab, but here it's all automated and we can get at uh, energies of transitions and identify transitions, especially in very complex molecules where we're just starting out like a polymer system or a big uh, biological system where we want to see where there are phase transitions. We have UV visible spectrometers. Um, the, uh, there over here to the right, uh, they can do uh, either solutions or they can do UV visible uh, in reflection off of a solid surface. Uh, down below in the bottom left-hand corner is the, are these two GC mass specs. If you're a big fan of SC, uh, NCIS or CIS, any of those crime lab problems, any pro uh, uh, TV programs, one of their heart, uh, their uh, fundamental uh, pieces of equipment are the GCMSs where you separate things especially organic molecules, and then determine what the molecules are by mass spectrometry. Right next to it is an atomic absorption spectroscopy apparatus, which is a, uh, what it does is it looks at the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the trace analysis, for trace analysis in uh, metal ions, so it can go down to parts per million easily and determine concentrations. Right next to it is a fluorimeter, it's kind of the opposite of a UV visible. It looks at the emission of light once we excite it. Okay, uh, up next, next slide, we have uh, two in the upper left-hand corner, we have two infrared spectrometers. They kind of do the same thing as Raman, but they do it with infrared absorption. One is a typical, they're all Fourier transform machines now. Uh, we use, a, one is a straightforward absorption 
that's the one that I, that's the one to the inside. The one with the hood up on it is a, an attenuated total reflection Fourier transform. And right there below that hood is a little silver anvil with a little tiny diamond window set in there that you put your sample on and the absorption, the infrared absorption is done in reflection off of that diamond uh, uh, window. Okay, all the way over to the right side is X-ray fluorescence. There we, you can do non-destructive elemental analysis of materials. Uh, one of the, actually one of the uh, experiments that the students do is they bring in a piece of jewelry and determine exactly is that piece of jewel really 24 karat gold, 14 karat gold, or is it some kind of fake uh, metal? Uh, so you can actually, without hurting your, your piece of jewelry, uh, or you can bring in other kind of solids. Uh, so you can just do a complete elemental analysis from X-ray fluorescence. Right below it, there's a microscopy system. Uh, next to it is an X-ray powder scattering system, X-ray scattering. And then there's an electron paramagnetic resonance spectrometer next to it, at, where they look at the environment of unpaired electrons or free radical electrons in molecules. And in fact, uh, that particular instrument you would find in every major beer brewery in the, in the United States, probably also Europe, because what they use EPR for is that's how they can tell whether, how, whether a beer has gone bad or not. As the beer goes bad, it generates more and more free radicals. And so they look at their samples, their, their stock, and say, okay, what's the concentration of free radicals with the EPR? And determine whether they can ship it or they got to throw it. And to the left, there at the very bottom left-hand corner, is the 500 megahertz research NMR. That's We have a, a 600 also coming in. Uh, this is this one that people start using as early as their freshman year. Uh, our students get to be trained on these. And so that they, I mean, this is typically might be the only NMR that some universities have, but this is uh, one that uh, our undergraduates use both in their research and in uh, their chem experimentation three and chem experimentation four laboratories. Okay, so these are just the sampling of the, uh, the instruments you get trained on. And that's one of the reasons that RPI chemistry majors are highly sought after by other uh, chemistry programs, especially graduate programs or people in industry, because they know our majors come out well, well trained in all these experimental instrumentation processes, uh, events. Okay, so, but what else is there? We have the possibility of dual majors. It's not necessarily always the easiest, but it's possible, especially if you come in with a substantial number of AP credits. What is always possible is a minor, because that usually in another uh, in another area. So a dual major, you would actually end up with, say, uh, let's say you did it in chemistry and physics, you would end up with both chemistry and physics listed on your degree. In a minor, you end up with a minor field associated on. on on your transcript so that people know that you have a minor in a particular area. There's also the co-terminal program where you can add on for another year after your bachelor's degree, you keep your same financial aid package. So you're able to go for five years to get your BS and MS. <clears throat> There's also undergraduate research and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in about 10 or 15 uh, seconds. But there's uh, a lot of that's we strongly encourage all of our undergraduates because they are just as important to us in our research programs as is our as our, our graduate students and our postdocs. All right, and there's co-ops and internships, uh, especially now that we have the Arch, where we can uh, you can have a good solid eight months where you can go and, and enjoy some type of. Uh, either internal with a research group on campus or at another university in industry, a government lab, or you could do anything else you want to do with that as long as it's an approved process. You could go on a uh, on a, a, some kind of a, a, a missionary thing, whatever you choose. It's just whatever. All right, emerging venture ecosystem. You can get up to started with uh, our help another group and then the international experiments. 
uh, <clears throat> we particularly have a sister school in Denmark that they will talk a little bit about later. Um, maybe Professor Colon will talk a little bit about the end. And <clears throat> But there's all kinds of things available to you. But we know that research is a very important part of our program. And we encourage our freshmen to get involved as early as the first sem second semester of their freshman year and to try different research throughout their entire time at RPI. And so to talk a little bit more about the research programs, I'm going to turn you over to Professor Dinolfo, who's our Adirondacks photo photographer there. So I'll give it to you, uh, Peter. Hello, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, so as Professor Kornowski said, my name is uh, Peter Dinolfo. I've been a faculty here at RPI since uh, roughly 2000, late 2007. Um, since that time, I've had almost four dozen undergraduates come through my laboratory, and, and so I'm, I'm heavily involved in undergraduate research. So, uh, so chemistry is inherently uh, an experimental science. You can't learn chemistry with actually, without getting into the lab and actually doing experiments. And so our chemistry major programs really recognize the importance of this and then also involving research as a critical component of all the majors. Um, so we have this really strong commitment to undergraduate research, and, and I think it's one of the major, one of the real strong points of our program and, and somewhat unique compared to many other universities just to the degree in which we involve undergraduate students in, a, in our programs. Uh, we currently have 13 to 14 research active faculty, faculty in our department and almost all of them involve undergraduate researchers in their labs, often for several years at a time. So uh, students are encouraged to start looking into research as soon as their first year, their, in particular their first semester in the program. We have a, a brand new course called Chemistry for Life that both Professor Kornowski and Professor Colon run, which kind of exposes each student to all the different research opportunities within the department. And we encourage the students to go and meet with faculty and to talk about all these different research opportunities. Um, and as soon, soon as uh, the second semester of the freshman year, students can join a lab and begin working on their own independent research. Um, uh, Professor Kornowski was talking about our excellent laboratory courses, the, the experimental chem courses one, two, three, and four, and those really are phenomenal laboratory courses, com especially compared to a lot of other programs uh, across the country. But really, it's, it's a different kind of uh, process when you're doing research where uh, you're not following a lab manual that has a prescribed output or a prescribed result at the end of it, uh, as you would in a, in a lab course. With research, your, your result may be unknown and you're doing something brand new that hasn't been done before. And that's where you really, really begin to, to learn uh, chemistry in depth. Um, so uh, students can uh, join labs and they're gonna work alongside other graduate students or other postdocs or even faculty in the labs. I'm often in the lab working with my own students on a, on a weekly basis. Um, all right, so next slide, Jerry. So all the faculty research, um, you know, in the in the chemistry department, we're, we're well grounded in all the major subdisciplines of chem chemistry. So for example, organic, inorganic, physical, biochemistry, analytical chemistry. But overall, the, the general research uh, ideas and goals kind of fall into these five main research thrusts. And these, these research thrusts span across the entire institute and involve many faculty from many different departments and schools. Uh, so the first one on the upper left is energy in the environment. There's a, a large component of our faculty working on renewable energy sources and, and also impacts of, of science on the environment. Um, Biotechnology and life science is another real core research thrust of the university. Uh, we have a big component in computational science and engineering, and, and, uh, and in particular, um, artificial intelligence is becoming more and more important here at, at Rensselaer. Um, nanomaterials uh, and advanced materials is another big major research thrust. And finally, media, arts, science, and technology. We have this unique aspect here at RPI where we're trying to merge both the scientific aspects with, with art and, and in media and trying to see how does art impact science and science impact art. So, all right, next slide. So uh, this is the Cogswell building again. We've seen some other uh, pictures of this earlier. This is the main center, the main home for the Department of Chemistry. 
Um, most of the faculty have their research labs in this building, and there's only one teaching lab in this, uh, this building, and that's for the experimental chems three and four. So that's would be for the junior level students. Um, and this is where all of those, those wonderful instruments that uh, Professor Kornowski talked about. And the, and the great advantage of having this all located in one building is that students conducting research have access to all these instruments as well. So you get trained in uh, all those techniques during the lab courses, and then you get to apply them in, in your own research. Uh, next slide. The other major uh, building that the chemistry department is located in is the Center for Biotechnology and Interdisciplinary Studies. And this is a photo of it right here. Um, this is another research uh, focused building. There are no teaching facilities in here, but the faculty have their own research labs. And it's, it's a really interesting design on the, the left hand side of the building uh, are the actual lab spaces. And the labs run almost the entire length of this building and they're wide open. And it basically allows the students uh, to mingle across different research groups. So one research group may have two or three lab bays, and then another research group may have uh, another couple of lab bays. And um, the number of departments in this building vary quite a bit. There's, there's chemistry, there's chemical engineering, there's biochemistry and biophysics, there's biomedical engineering, and there's also biology. So you could be working at your lab bench and right across from you could be somebody from an entirely different school in the engineering school or a different department. And you can bounce different ideas about your research off of them. And it's a really uh, dynamic and, and collaborative environment. So um, the chemistry department is also affiliated with a number of research centers. And these research centers span the entire institute. So they can involve uh, faculty, uh, from different departments that are kind of all working towards the, the same goal. And so obviously the big one is the Center for Biotechnology and Interdisciplinary Study. We also are involved in the Brooke Center for Biochemical Solar Energy Research. This is trying to understand how nature is able to convert sunlight into, into renewable energies and fuels and try to mimic that. Uh, we're also heavily involved in the Computational Center for Innovations. RPI has one of the biggest supercomputers in the in the country, and it's actually the top supercomputer for an academic institute. Uh, and again, this is uh, available for students to get trained on and, and use. I've actually had several undergraduate students uh, using this system over the past. Uh, our department has a, a real strong history in polymer synthesis and characterization. So we have the New York State Center for Polymer Synthesis. Uh, there is the Rensselaer Exploratory Center for Chem Informatics. Um, and you can read these others, the, the, the uh, Data Center of Materials, Devices, Integrated Systems, the Center for Future Energy, and as well as we have a collaboration with the Mount Sinai Hospital. It's our partner uh, metal school school. So we have a lot of collaborations with them. Um, and so again, this kind of highlights how the uh, the interdisciplinary research going on in our department and how uh, research nowadays often spans multiple discipline, disciplines. You're not solely going to be a chemist doing only chemistry. You're going to be interacting with a lot of other types of, of people and scientists and engineers uh, tackling similar problems. Uh, so. All right, I think that's it for me. So I'm back, okay. I've been trying to answer some of the questions on the side. Uh, yes, we have a lot of interaction between uh, materials engineering and chemistry. And yes, there's a lot of interaction between chemistry and biology. And biology. So we have people going to over into biology to do research, biologists coming over to do research with us. The same was with uh, materials engineering. Okay, now let's ask a little couple of questions about, uh, uh, focus in on, what's there for you to support you as a student? Some of you are gonna be coming from far away, some you'll be very close. But it's important that while you're away for the first time in your life on your own, that there is a support structure for you. That so that you can get help without <clears throat> without having to really uh, struggle to get there. Okay, so what do we have available for you? Um, this is just a small list of the centers. There is, in particular, you'll be acquainted with the first year experience because they get involved with you guys right as you start to enter, and you'll go. Uh, they'll track you your whole first year. They're wonderful people. Uh, I know uh, Dr. Colon and I have worked with them with, uh, with the iPersist Mentors Program. They are excellent and very uh, concerned and very uh, 
<coughs> very, very warm people who will help you uh, throughout your whole first year. Another group would be the advise, Advising and Learning Center. These are the people who are specialists in, uh, in learning, and these would be the people you would go to to get extra, uh, extra help with, uh, say, if you needed a specific tutor for a course, or maybe you felt like you were having problems and you needed more time on exams. They're the people who would arrange for all that. And so they're always there. <clears throat> and so that's with you for your whole four years at Rensselaer or however long you are here. Um, <clears throat> then there's the uh, academic uh, student life. Student life is, again, they're very much tied in to both the advising and learning center and the first year experience. These, these are people who were involved in all aspects of your time at Rensselaer. So they know how <clears throat> they, they are able to help you integrate the whole experience together from academic to, to off, uh, off academic issues. And then we have two different types of advising. Uh, we have all, always we've had the traditional academic advising. Uh, you come in and what I, I will do as the uh, director of the undergraduate studies, I will break you guys up into groups of about eight students each and assign you to a professor. That will be your academic advisor for your entire time at Rensselaer. Um, <clears throat> so they will track you all the way through. I will not give them any other advisees. Uh, so they just can concentrate on you. Uh, and so they're the, they're the people you can go to and ask, am I on track in my, uh, in my program, in my, say, my bio biological chemistry program? Or am I on track in the industrial chemistry program? And uh, what do I need to take? Or what, how should I do this or that? Uh, in terms of the specifics of a program. However, we found that not all faculty can be equally uh, edu educated in what all the other departments are doing. Um, so <clears throat> at Rensselaer, we've come up with the hub advising uh, pro process. And we have trained people there. There are three people in an in office. There are seven, uh, five days a week, uh, seven to eight hours a day that you can drop in and ask questions throughout your whole four years. So they're mainly associated with that. They can give you in individual uh, ideas about what courses to take, selection, but they special, their specialty is they know all the other curricula of all the other departments and not only in science, but in engineering and HNSS, uh, et cetera. And what they will do is if you're looking to do, say, a dual degree or, a, or a, uh, a minor, they can tell you exactly what you would need to do for that other curriculum. And then they will work with the academic advisor to help you change and devise a schedule where you can fit it into your actual curriculum. And so that, it, that very, very valuable. Um, uh, you can, and they're very, very good people. They are constantly, that's their only job is to stay abreast of what's happening in the, all the different departments. So you get a chance, they, have, they will know all the details of every department. And if they don't, they know the specific person to go to, to, to find out that information. And <clears throat> so that saves you a tremendous amount of time. And so you don't have to jump from person to person to person. And or have a have to wait for an academic advisor to find this information out for you. The very last part of there is a very important factor, is something brand new. The I Persist Mentors Program. It I think it's just finishing its fifth year. I'm involved in it, and but the the person who really deserves all the credit for it is Dr. Cologne, or Professor Cologne, our department head, who came up with the program and <clears throat> got it funded and. Uh, and on its way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask him to step back in and talk a little bit about the I Persist Mentors Program. Thank you. Um, yes, the, the I Persist Program stands for, it's an acronym for uh, interdisciplinary, uh, it's, it's interdisciplinary program um, uh, in education, research, and support involving science and technology. And it's a program that was designed to support students in their first semester, not only support 
them academically, but support them in adapting to uh, college life, uh, help them with these, uh, what we call soft skills, uh, uh, time management, um, how to study, uh, how to organize, uh, you know, where to look for certain resources on campus uh, and, and just provide uh, mentorship and advice. After all, these are students that have been at RPI at least uh, one year. Um, the way it works is that the mentors will meet with a group of eight first-year students. And every student that is taking general chemistry, uh, calculus one, or physics one, um, will have uh, a mentor. So some of our first-year students will have three different mentors for each one of those disciplines. And... <clears throat> Uh, this is a great opportunity for the mentees to receive support. But what is uh, also exciting about the about the program is the opportunities for the mentors. Uh, the mentors learn how to speak to others in public, how to teach, um, how to communicate effectively. Uh, uh, one thing is to understand how to solve a problem it is a different uh, situation to have to explain this problem so that somebody else can understand it. And sometimes you have to be able to understand it in, in different ways uh, so that you can explain it in a variety of, of, of ways to other students. So uh, this provides a tremendous professional growth uh, uh, development opportunity for our mentors. So uh, as, uh, as you go through the process as a mentee, uh, many of our mentors are second year students um, and their experience, experience in the mentor program um, motivated them to apply to, be, to become a mentor. So that is one of the most unique professional development opportunities that you will find in any at any university. Um, and of course, students, we have mentors, about one third of our mentors are returning mentors. And we also have a selected group of mentors that become senior mentors. Um, so uh, in addition to all the other professional development opportunities, uh, this is one that is particularly unique uh, uh, to Rensselaer. Uh, Professor Kornowski, uh, back to you. Oh, I forgot to point out this picture here. Um, this is a picture of, I think it's 2017 uh, mentor group um, with a mentor t-shirt. Uh, we design a t-shirt every year uh, for the mentors. And so to the left, you see here a little brochure that we use to to recruit uh, uh, students, and and so I don't I can't see it very well, but one of one of the ones we have uh, uh, has a little play on chemistry and says, "Be part of the solution, not the precipitate." And so it's a it's a way to just you know draw students to the program and and basically build a, a, a learning community uh, to reach out to others. Thank you. Okay, and I'll finish up here with the, with the last slides here. By the way, <clears throat> that is, we typically roughly have uh, about 50 mentors every year uh, from chemistry who are doing just the chemistry. There is an equal size program for calculus and physics and so not all these are chemistry majors and uh, not, all the, uh, not all the physics uh, mentors are physics majors, nor all the calculus majors, all uh, calculus major, uh, math majors. But okay, I'm gonna move on to something about our clubs. Um, there, over, there are over 200 clubs and various organizations and such that come out of the, uh, the student union. Uh, it's really unique. I mean, just about anything you want to do, there's a club at Rensselaer, and it's all run by students. 
and funded by students out of the uh, <clears throat> out of the student union. And so, but inside the chemistry department, we have two uh, organizations. One is the Rensselaer Chemistry Society, and this is a st the student affiliate of the American Chemical Society. That so this is our student affiliate affiliate of the National Society uh, <clears throat> for Chemistry and Chemical Engineering. Uh, the Rensselaer Chemistry Society is composed of not only chemistry majors. Uh, you can be uh, the, there are a lot of chemical engineering majors. There are people in materials, uh, people in biochemistry or biology that join because they just want to be part of the Rensselaer Chemistry Society. And you can join this as from day one after you walk into uh, RPI. Uh, the nice thing about it is that you get a key to the uh, to the, the the chemistry lounge, so you have a lounge to go to where they have a library, and you get to interact with a lot of other students who have taken all the courses, or or maybe even in the courses that you are taking, where they may be a, a mentor for the course that you're in. Um, so, but these people have as a club. What they will do is they do a lot of the outreach programs. They will go to the local high schools, the local middle schools, to do uh, outreach programs to present chemistry as a science to uh, students. They will go to the New York State Museum on Mole Day to put up a, uh, a demonstration of chemistry. Um, but they are basically our outreach group. They also have their own little internal uh, series of uh, seminars. They will invite people in to talk about various uh, possible uh, professions in chemistry outside of the research laboratory. I know they have invited people in who are chemical writers, uh, technical writers who have a degree in chemistry or biochemistry, but who now make their living writing. Um, <clears throat> but they have and people who are uh, patent lawyers, etc. And plus they'll do a lot of local uh, research scientists, you know, in chemistry, we're on the, uh, the edges of chemistry, they'll invite them in to give little seminars for them for that actual group. Uh, so you can join that right away. And that gets you access to the 24 hour access to the chemistry building and to the lounge. All right, if you do really well in chemistry, and after you've taken a certain number of credits, I believe it's uh, might be 20 some credits with a certain GPA, you can be invited to join the National, uh, the Chemistry Honor Society. It's part of the National Chemistry Honor Society. And these, this is a picture of the officers. They were doing something with, uh, with respect to in inducting new inductees in this photograph, but that's available to you. Um, so what I would like to do now is I'm gonna go to the last slide, uh, but before we t take off, I have, we have two undergraduates who are sitting in the wings here, uh, uh, Jen Gregg and Sebastian Burnt. Uh, Jen is one of our, they're both our chemistry majors. Uh, Sebastian is our California guy. And Jen is our hockey player from a division one hockey player. And so they can give you interesting perspectives on the, uh, what it's like to be a student at Rensselaer. So feel free to ask them questions. So Jen and Sebastian, if you hit the broadcast video, I'm gonna bow out and maybe Professor Cologne can Hi everyone, I'm Jen Gregg. <laughs> okay, feel free to uh, write any questions you might have for Sebastian or Jen uh, in the chat box and they will keep track. And so I would like to ask uh, Jen and Sebastian to basically introduce, uh, introduce yourselves um, uh, and a little bit about your background and some of the experiences that you have uh, had while at RPI. Okay, um, I'm Jen Gregg. I am from Albany, New York, so not very far from RPI. Um, I'm a chemistry major on the traditional track, so no biology or anything like that. Um, I'm a junior. <laughs> As far as any research I've done, I haven't done any research at RPI, but there have been many opportunities locally around the Troy campus that I have had the opportunity to uh, do internship programs. So that has been great because um, RPI is very centrally located 
and has a lot of good options around with various companies who are available positions. Okay, Sebastian? Hi, I'm uh, Sebastian Barrett. I'm uh, also a junior and I'm in the um, the chemical biology track, so a lot more bio. But I still kind of have my, well, it's chemistry, but I have my foot in bio. And um, so, yeah, so as uh, Dr. Doc said, I'm from uh, California, so this is a kind of big change for me, especially with the weather, which is always fun. But um, in terms of my experiences here, I heavily involved in research. I've uh, been in two different research labs and I've uh, done it since my second semester uh, freshman year. So I've only had really positive experiences doing doing research. Uh, if I could, um, you know, if I if I had my choice, I would uh, I'd be able to do research and not take classes <laughs> just because it's it's been a, a really good time. But um, yeah, if uh, you have any questions about doing research and, and what that's like, I'm, I'm your guy. Okay, so uh, Jen, um, you've you've done uh, some opportunities outside the lab at Rensselaer. You must be doing other things at RPI that are taking your time and keeping you very busy and active. You want to share a little bit about some of the things you've done um, or that you do uh, while at RPI? Um, as Dr. Koronowski mentioned, I am on the uh, Division One women's hockey team, ice hockey, not field hockey. Um, it takes a significant amount of time away for academics, but everyone says that freshman year is the hardest. I will definitely agree with that. But the only reason I found it hard was the time management. But after the first semester, you definitely get a handle on that. So none to worry. Um, but yeah, I'm on the women's hockey team. Come to our games when you come here. <laughs> 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 uh, very good well i i just had to you know we had to point that out because uh there's so much there's so many hours one has uh during the day and so deciding where to invest those hours is is very important and you have to make sacrifices at, at you know here and there and so um so these are very two very different unique situations sebastian um so um what else have you done while at rpi and uh, what are you doing for your semester uh, away? So I'm uh, I'm part of a couple clubs. Um, I the main club I'm a part of is the uh, the radio uh, club on campus. So it's cool. It's uh, an FCC licensed uh, full radio station. We have a it's a ninety one point five FM if you're in the area, and um, you can become a, a DJ and have your own show. So you're broadcasting live um, with like a a 10 second delay but just about live and um uh, you, you wait i'm sorry you have that you have the deep voice can you give us like a little little clip what you would sound like or how you would do your your radio voice or so how does that work so i don't actually have a show i'm more on the okay. on the technical end so i'm kind of the guy you know in the background making sure it's, it's like working well you know taking care of the people and whatnot um sorry i'm, I'm congested i'm uh, just uh, recovering from well, i think it sounds perfect for radio. Ah, uh, yes. Very deep <laughs> voice, you know. Very voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, what was your second question, Dr. Clinton? Yeah. So, uh, okay, so you do that. Um, what else? Uh, what other things have you had an opportunity to do? Have you done anything with mentors, with RCS, any? Um... Yeah, so I'm part of yeah. RCS, and uh, it's um, it's a lot of fun. The people there are, you know, they're interesting and they're very friendly. So we're able to organize different, um, you know, like postering uh, sessions. Like, so we have posters all around the, the campus. We can, um, we design experiments and we have outreach programs. Uh, we've gone to uh, museums. We've done uh, programs with, uh, with younger children or what well, was with, uh, yeah, I think with middle school students. Um, Otherwise, I uh, I spend a lot of my time in lab, <laughs> probably more than is healthy. Yeah. But it's yeah, yeah, yeah. where I love oh, to no, be. It's I, healthy. It's I, healthy. You <laughs> saw the uh, the five hundred megahertz um, NMR room. I have spent hours and hours in there. <laughs> um. So uh, one question. Uh, 